Welcome to Science with Father, a YouTube channel dedicated to sharing science with you in a fun and interactive way. Enjoy! <laughs> Dr. Smith and I had to be in sync to do these activities on resonance. Try them. See if you can resonate. Dr. Smith and I like to swing. Every time we are facing forward and at our maximum height, the green light flashes. The light flashes once every two seconds. So our frequency which equals 1 divided by the time for one complete oscillation is 0 0.5 hertz. Will our frequency change if we swing higher? Nope, still 0 0.5 hertz. How about if the mass has changed? In other words, Dr. Smith swings by himself. The frequency will definitely change then. Wrong. Even when Dr. Smith swings by himself and increases the amplitude of his swing, he still oscillates at 0 0.5 hertz. So it does not matter who is in the swing or how fast they swing, their frequency is always 0 0.5 hertz. In fact, the only way to change the frequency of this swing, or any swing for that matter, is to change the value of gravity of the planet you are swinging on. But that's kind of hard. Or change the length of the swing. Check this out. Dr. Smith is climbing onto and swinging on a much shorter swing. His frequency finally changed, and this is only accomplished by changing the swing's length. For each length of the swing, there is a different frequency. This frequency is called the natural, or resonant frequency, of the swing. Natural frequency? What's that? I know it's weird, but every object has at least one natural frequency. A person swinging on a swing is like a pendulum. It does not matter how far back you pull a pendulum. A pendulum always oscillates at the same frequency. Just like the swing, the only way you can change the resonant frequency of a pendulum is to change the length of the pendulum. Or go to the moon. Yeah, that's right. A hanging spring also has one natural frequency. It does not matter how far the spring is pulled down. It always oscillates at the same frequency. So springs, pendulums, and swings are examples of objects that when you get them to oscillate, they all have only one natural frequency. Dr. Smith downloaded this frequency analyzer app onto his phone. There were a lot of them to choose from, but each does the same thing. Frequency analyzers provide a real-time plot of the frequencies of sound that are being detected by the analyzer. The x-axis of the plot is the frequency range of human hearing, which is about 20 to 20,000 hertz. When an object is struck, plucked, or rubbed, it may begin to resonate. Resonating objects vibrate and create audible sound if the frequency of vibration is within the range of human hearing. You cannot get objects to vibrate at any frequency, only their natural or resonant frequency. Dr. Smith has a quarter inch diameter aluminum rod, cello rosin, and a rubber mallet. Without rosin on his fingers, his fingers rub together smoothly. But when rosin is placed on his fingers, Dr. Smith has a lot of friction between his fingers. Dr. Smith first rubs the rosin on one half of the rod. The purpose of the rosin is to transfer energy to the rod through stick-slip 
friction. The rosin is then spread evenly over the end of the rod. Holding the rod at its center, stick slip friction transfers energy to the rod and the rod resonates at its natural frequency. Resonance can also be achieved through striking the rod with a mallet. Many objects have more than one natural or resonant frequency of vibration. Dr. Smith has a six foot long hollow aluminum tube. He's going to hold the tube at different positions while striking the tube with a rubber mallet. The resonant frequencies that exist will be revealed on the frequency analyzer. Holding the tube at its exact center position, the tube is struck and the resonant frequencies detected are shown on the frequency analyzer. Notice that many frequencies quickly dissipated, leaving only a few surviving resonant frequencies at 350, 750, and 1500 Hz. Let's try again, this time holding the tube at the quarter length position and striking the tube. Many frequencies again appear to quickly dissipate, leaving only one resonant frequency to survive at roughly 500 Hz. When the tube is held at one-sixth the length of the tube, again only one resonant frequency survives, but this time at about 900 Hz. It seems like different resonant frequencies exist depending on where the tube is held. What if the tube was not being touched when struck by the mallet? What would happen then? That's a really good question. Let's try it. Dr. Smith is not touching the tube. Instead, he is holding the tube up with a string. Now, when the tube is struck, all resonant frequencies are heard. How did that happen? The reason why different resonant frequencies are heard when the tube is held at different positions and why all resonant frequencies are heard when the tube is not touched is something scientists call standing waves. A standing wave is a wave that is fixed in place in the object. A standing wave exists in the tube when fixed locations on the tube vibrate and other fixed locations do not vibrate at all. The locations on the tube that are not vibrating are called nodes. For example, resonant frequency number one has a total of three nodes. Resonant frequency number two has a total of six nodes. Remember, objects can only have certain resonant frequencies. Let's pretend this aluminum tube can only have these two resonant frequencies. So when the tube is struck with a mallet, both natural frequencies resonate in the tube. It depends on where the tube is held that determines which resonant frequency survives. If the tube is held at position A, resonant frequency 1 dissipates its energy into where the tube is being held, while resonant frequency number 2 continues oscillating because position A is a node for resonant frequency 2. If the tube is held at position B, resonant frequency number 2 loses energy, while resonant frequency number 1 continues oscillating because position B is a node for resonant frequency number one. If the tube is not held at any position, both frequencies oscillate after being struck with a mallet, and both frequencies remain strong. Standing waves are difficult to actually see with a metal tube or rod because the amplitude of the oscillation is so small. However, you can actually see standing waves with this activity. Dr. Smith has a roughly two inch piezoelectric transducer, capped from a cap of tennis balls and some tape. 
He centers the transducer on the top of the cap and tapes it in place. Dr. Smith is going to use a frequency generator app he installed on his phone. A frequency generator creates continuous frequencies from 20 Hz all the way up to 20,000 Hz. An amplifier is used to increase the volume or amplitude of the frequencies generated by the frequency generator. Using various audio cables and connectors, Dr. Smith connects the headphone connection of the phone to an input on the amplifier. The output of the amplifier is then connected to the transducer. If the setup is working correctly, you can hear the frequencies generated by the app on his phone through the transducer. The volume must be very high for standing waves to appear, so ear protection is a good idea. In order to see standing waves, Dr. Smith sprinkles table salt onto the cap. Starting with the lowest frequency setting and maximum volume settings, he slowly increases the frequency until a standing wave is seen on the cap. His first standing wave is seen at 1300 Hz. Recall that with standing waves, the object itself is actually oscillating. It is only at the nodes of the standing wave where no movement in the object occurs. Since motion does not occur at a node, the salt bounces everywhere but at the nodes and settles at the nodes of the standing wave. The nodes are in shapes of circles. Yep. Now check this out. Higher frequency standing waves have more energy and therefore more nodes. As Dr. Smith slowly increases the frequency to 2600 Hz, we come upon another standing wave. If he increases the frequency even more, a standing wave is found at 5200 Hz. The higher the frequency of a standing wave, the higher its energy and the more nodes it will have. Dr. Smith has a wine glass that has no decorations and very thin walls. Such a wine glass will give a loud and clear sound when tapped and will create standing waves in the glass. However, creating standing waves in a wine glass is not as easy as it looks. Rubbing a dry finger along the rim of the glass provides too much friction, while rubbing a very wet finger does not have enough friction. Rubbing too fast does not work. Rubbing too slow does not work either. The finger must be rubbed along the rim of the glass with just the right amount of moisture, pressure, and speed in order for the correct amount of energy to be transferred to the glass that perfectly matches the energy of the natural resonant frequency of the glass. Remember, standing waves are actual physical oscillations in the object, so Dr. Smith can only hold the glass at a node. If he holds the glass somewhere else, the standing wave will dissipate its energy into his hand, stopping the generated sound. You can easily change the natural frequency of a wine glass by adding water. The addition of water changes the mass of the glass, and with more water, a lower natural frequency resides in the glass.
If you look closely at the edge of the water in a resonating glass, you can see standing waves being created. <laughs> Let's review. All objects have at least one natural frequency they can resonate at and generate sound if the frequency is within the range of human hearing, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Every natural frequency of an object exists as its own standing wave in the resonating object, where fixed locations of the object either vibrate or not. Locations where no vibration occurs is referred to as a node. Different standing waves have different frequencies of oscillation. Higher frequencies consist of greater energy and more nodes in the standing wave in the object. If you touch a resonating object, only the standing waves that have a node at the location the object is being touched will continue to oscillate in the object.